Ladies and gentlemen, it is your friend, Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs. It's been a hot minute. It's good to see you all. It's good to see you all. We've got, um, we've got a lot of you guys already, already in chat. Good to see you. I, um, I'm still messing around with my webcam and unfortunately, sometimes it makes it look like I'm wearing lipstick as it does at the moment. But I promise you, I'm not actually wearing lipstick. <laughs> Hello, 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 hello. Everyone's saying hi. Pro Blue says I'm on time. Let's give a round of applause. Ah, <laughs> uh, Derpy Possum can't stay around very long, but he's glad to join. Good to have you here. Derpy Possum is one of the most prolific uh, Ocean Liner video commenters on the internet. You'll see him on anything Ocean Liner related, and he's always backing me up when people are, are commenting negatively on my videos. So thank you, Derpy. I appreciate what you do. Drelloffs says, hi, Ocean Liner Design Guy. Hi, Drelloffs, how are you? Tanya, hello, hello. Four Funnel Beast, do you have lipstick? I told you, I told you uh, someone would think I was wearing lipstick, of course. All of you are saying, love the lipstick. Great, thank you, yeah, I'm glad you like it. Danny says, hello from Ireland, hello from Melbourne, Australia, my friend, how are you? Alec Wheeler, what is your globe light behind your shoulder? Uh, that is, um, uh, uh, wrong shoulder. That is that is my globe of the world. Unfortunately, this webcam doesn't really give too much detail. I think I'm going to get a new one. Um, anyway. And uh, yeah, I've had it for years. But uh, it's nice because you can actually trace out a lot of the routes that ocean liners used to take and kind of figure out, uh, you know, how far away parts of the world are from each other. And putting it in perspective on a globe is really cool. I enjoy it. How are we all? Hello, hello. Red Storm is from Georgia, USA. Hello, my friend. Oh, so nice. Uh, Rob D says, can you notice me? Yes, I, I can notice you. <laughs> I'm not wearing, I'm not wearing lipstick, guys. I promise you I'm not, li I'm not wearing lipstick. It's, I don't know. I look, I look pretty normal in the mirror. I've already got some ship questions coming through. Um, we got uh, some interesting comments. Let's uh, let's start off with a little a little Q and A, guys, because I haven't had I haven't done a live stream since last year. So let's talk about ships. What do you think? Um, Paid to drive says a very nice thing. Says the amount of work you put into your videos is unreal. Mike Brady, keep it up. How long do your videos roughly take to edit? They take a long time. You'd be surprised. I mean, a fifteen minute video, depending. I mean, the, the HMS Hood video that I put out last week took. Uh, two weeks of on and off editing, but it was probably a couple days of hard work. You know, I mean, you have to animate the 3D models. So I basically do all my own animation work and then you have to, you know, clip it together, add the right music. And it, it just takes a long time finding the photographs. Um, but it's a labor of love. I love filmmaking. I'm really interested in it. This has been um, a bit of a new thing for me. I never, you know, had any kind of like experience making movies or film or anything. And so making documentaries, I always try and... Uh, if it's a if it's a documentary about a disaster, I always try and insert this thing that I call a, a heartbreak moment to kind of like hit the audience with a sledgehammer emotionally. <laughs> so if you watch any of my um, videos, you'll typically see this one moment in particular that I've designed to just kind of like have creepy music or something a little haunting and just make it be real sad. Like in the Laconia video, the cruise ship fire, it was when somebody was playing the piano while the ship was burning and these people were huddling for safety at the, the stern of the ship in the shopping center at the Agora shopping lounge. And um, they, I, I found the exact song that someone played. It was Hawaiian Wedding Song, which was an Elvis hit at the time. And, um, and Andy Williams. And put that in and made it a little creepy. Added some echo. Effective stuff. <laughs> anyway, that's me rambling. Stephen Hemingway says, um, with a lovely five pound donation, my friend, thank you very much for your support. Love the live feeds. Keep them coming. Oh, that shade of lipstick needs improving. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not wearing lipstick. Look, it's just, it's just the, it's the saturation on the camera. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, um, Marks of Distinction has donated uh, $2. Thank you very much, my friend. Very, very much appreciated. Um, the channel now has costs, so I'm every every bit of support is really um, helpful. I pay um, a writer to help me out every now and then. I'm outsourcing a little bit of the work 
So I really appreciate every every little bit you guys can you guys send through. So thank you very much. Um, Caden says play play that guitar. I, I won't embarrass myself. Um, there's hope for change. Beautiful uh, twenty dollar uh, super chat. Cool. Glad to catch another live from you. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great to have you here. Good to have you. Here we go. Forget the lipstick, Mike. What about the Sunbeam Radiant Control Toaster? How great is it? It's a hell of a toaster. Are we going to back, get back into our 1950s commercial thing again? Marks of distinction with a $5 super chat. Did you realize the gymnasium is on the wrong side of the million, million dollar shot in the movie Titanic? Yeah. So you guys know I've been making videos about how they made the film. And um, I did talk about the, the hero shot, you know, when Jack's saying I'm, I'm king of the world and flying over the um the camera flies over the titanic they flipped the model and i i don't quite know why i would assume it's just based on they they shot that in a basically in a warehouse with the camera on a, on a rail system like it was um motion controlled and i can only assume that from the photographs that i've seen you had a desk set up that was monitoring the model on the side of the Titanic where the gymnasium was. And I'll see if I can find that photograph and show you guys. Therefore, I don't think there was enough room on the starboard side of the model to, to kind of track that shot. So I think they shot the port side and then, and then flipped the model to, to match the storyboards of the, of the shot. Um, I'll try and find, I'll try and find the photograph for you. Someone just asked me if I will, um, Photoshop the Queen Mary 2. And that's a that's a good question. Uh, and I will explain why. It's because I've uh, booked a small trip on the Queen Mary 2. The Queen Mary 2 is coming to Melbourne. So the Queen Mary 2 is coming to Australia next month on her way across the world. She's going to Mauritius after this. And I'm going to sail. Um, I'm taking my mum. And if you're watching this, mum, hi. I'll see you for lunch. <laughs> um, we're sailing on the Queen Mary 2 from Sydney under Australia uh, to Western Australia and then leaving Queen Mary 2 there. So the first time I've ever been on an ocean liner. I've been on a cruise ship once when I was like 12. So really, really excited to go on the Queen Mary 2. Now I'll find you that photograph in a minute. I've got super chats coming through, so I want to keep up with them. Um, you guys are keeping them coming thick and fast. So I appreciate all of your support. Harry Vlog says, love your video. Great quality. Thank you, Harry. Really appreciate it. That's awesome, man. Tim says, hi, Mike Brady. I think I speak for everyone, but you create one of the best channels on YouTube. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's funny, you know, this was a little hobby that I started uh, in lockdown when I was miserable and we couldn't go anywhere. In, in Melbourne, the, the lockdown in Melbourne was so bad during COVID, you couldn't leave within a, a three mile radius of your, of your house. Like you had to stay within three miles. And at one point you could only go outside for one hour. Uh, it was really bad. So I, I was kind of bouncing off the walls. In case you can't tell, I've got great work ethic when it comes to this stuff. So obviously I was sitting there a little, a little bored. Catherine says, you look nice today. You should uh, grab and show us your favorite book from your collection. <laughs> Catherine has uh, ulterior motives, I believe. But thank you for the $5 um, super chat. I will go and find you a book. I think I've got enough that we'll do like a little, um, we'll do a little show and tell. I'll, I'll go and find the, the book that I've been reading that month or something I want to highlight for you guys. I will go and do that in a minute, Catherine. Good, good super chat. Good point. Daniel, Daniel Berman says, why did Titanic have triple screw warnings? Daniel, that's a really interesting question. So for those of you who are familiar with the Titanic, right at the stern of the ship, there were notice boards that said, uh, notice this vessel has triple screws, keep clear of blades. And the simple truth is that uh, the propellers directly beneath, depending on the loading of the ship, could be relatively close to the surface and could draw in smaller craft like tugs and, and boats, you know. And back then there wasn't as much kind of regulation around what kind of small boats were sailing around ships as there is today, because obviously now it's like a terror threat. Back then, small boats could come up close and as in maybe Britannic, you know, the prop wash could either f um, submerge the boats. So the, the huge amount of water being displaced by the propellers could overwhelm, like say a small rowboat if you're going out to look at the ship. And the notice boards and on, on, on ships actually came up in an insurance case. And I think it may have been the Olympic who drew in with her propeller blades, a tug and damaged it. And at the inquiry to that, 
the notice boards were specifically sighted. So all, all a lot of major ocean liners had boards exactly like them in the vicinity of the propellers, usually directly above where the propeller blade is. So Titanic had three notice signs, one port and one starboard in line with the propellers, and then one kind of centrally located at the stern fantail uh, in line with the central propeller. The idea being that if there's a sign there, you know there's a propeller beneath, so get out of dodge. The question is what colour were they? Has been debated endlessly. A lot of early paintings of Titanic and Ken Marshall's work shows them as being red, because obviously red is eye-catching as a, as a notice sign. But I think it was Bob Reed, Robert Reed, who's a researcher, made a very, very convincing case that they're actually black. And the reason they were black was... Um, Back then, I think red was really associated with fire, you know, so you would have had fire axes and things. So if something was painted red, it didn't necessarily read like today we would think, you know, stop signs are red. That's a recent invention. Stop signs at one point, some of them were black as well. You know, black kind of gave formal notice to something. And a lot of photographs of col uh, early color photographs of liners in the 40s and 50s, British liners show black propeller notice signs. So, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly convinced that the Titanic's notice boards were black. And to finish on this point, Tim, you're definitely getting your $5 worth here, <laughs> I hope. Uh, I believe it was uh, the steward, uh, Titanic steward, whose name is escaping me. Damn. Prentice, Frank Prentice, who was clinging to one of those signs as the stern of the ship was swinging up into the air right at the end and he lost his footing or his grip and he fell uh, into the water, but he survived. And yeah, at the, right at the end, he was clinging onto one of those notice boards for, for, for his life. Um, oh, sorry, this wasn't Tim, this was Daniel. But uh, my point still stands. There you go. That's everything I know about Titanic's propeller notice boards. Thank you for attending my TED talk. <laughs> uh, Piamo Beats says, love your work. Will you ever do something on the Wilhelm Gustloff? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got great Great uh, plans for the Wilhelm Gustloff. It's a, it's a really interesting story and I'd love to give my own take on it. It's ironic in that, you know, for, for a long time, it was the forgotten shipwreck. And now it is, everybody seems to know about it. Um, the Wilhelm Gustloff I'm interested in, I'm, I'm probably a little more interested in doing wrecks like the Armenia, which was before the Wilhelm Gustloff, but it was the Soviets' Wilhelm Gustloff. It was during the um, evacuation in, in, in front of the German invasion it was a very small uh steamer called the armenia loaded with like thousands of people a 300 foot long ship and uh, she was attacked by heinkel torpedo bombers and broke in half and sank in three minutes with a huge loss of life like i forget exactly how many but somewhere between like five and six thousand people maybe and um fascinating story would love to would love to cover that because that's that's a ship no one knows about you know what i mean I want to make sure I'm not uh, falling behind here. Logan, Logan Huffgarden, $5. Thank you, my friend. Will you do videos on the sinking of the Yamato and the USS Indianapolis? They were very horrific sinkings. Of course, with the Indianapolis now, I, I think of Quint's speech in Jaws and uh, it sends shivers down my spine still. Like that is one of the creepiest moments in cinema, but obviously based on true story, would love to. The Yamato, Musashi... Um, Taffy 3 is another one I'm really keen on doing. So the, the last stand of the USS Johnston and, and you know, the, the other destroyers there engaging Yamato um, would love to do that. So yeah, I do intend on doing more warship stuff. And I know this is a, technically an ocean liner channel, but I've always talked about wanting to expand and do airships and zeppelins. I, I, I'm working on a documentary, uh, documentary right now on the R101 airship, the, the British airship that crashed on its maiden voyage. So that'll be that'll be done in the next week or so. And uh, warship stuff. So yeah, you're dead right. The USS Indianapolis would be really interesting to, to do a video on and I intend on it. Uh, Angel says with a $2 donation, thank you very much. Edit Olympic to look like 1930s Arundel Castle. Edit Olympic to look like 1930s Arundel Castle. So you mean like um, with the twin funnels? Yeah, the, the Arundel Castle was funny because uh, she was originally a four funnel liner, right? And they, they, yes, yes. We could do that. We could maybe, maybe if we have time for a little um, ship edit towards the end of this. I know you guys like my ship edit segment. So maybe we'll do one of those in a minute. Maybe we'll do that. 
Selena, Selena uh, Lunaria says, hi Mike, uh, enjoy some good coffee on me. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, 20 pounds. I can get a, get a couple of coffees. You know, I'm a coffee drinker, so I really appreciate that. I just added some cool pictures that I commissioned a while ago in the white star line chat. You'll find the, the cute human form of Titanic, Olympic and Britannic. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, I like, um, I like the, the anthropomorphization, it's a big word, of, um, of ships. Cause you know, ships have personality. Right, they're all they're all a little different. I think ships have personality, so it makes sense. Jake O'Reilly with ten dollars, thank you. He says I want a cruise ship based on a Cleveland class cruiser, military cruising. There's an idea. We take you out on a World War Two era destroyer or cruiser, and you live like a crew member would have lived in a World War Two era uh, destroyer or cruiser, but you're just on a cruise. So there's no obviously no active combat, but you imagine you're just lying in your bunk at 3 a.m. and suddenly the all hands station bell starts ringing <laughs> for a gun drill. I'd probably do it. I'll be real. The Lane Victory is a victory ship in San Pedro, California, and they are restoring her to seaworthy condition. And I've seen some of the accommodations and they are like untouched from World War II. And apparently she's got one of the best kitchens on any museum ship in the world. And the crew, even though they're living in like spartan world war ii um victory ship conditions they're eating like lobster <laughs> so i think there's an idea in that eric rock says keep up the great work mike love the channel thank you very much eric really appreciate it that's awesome really appreciate it that's so cool i love uh, i love seeing that people enjoy what i do you know I, I i do this for fun and um i'm always touched when you guys when you guys say you're enjoying it so that's a good sign Ethereal Dubliners with two pounds. Thank you, my friend. Good to have you here. Um, Commander Quillian. Qu Commander Quillon. Quillon says, hello from South Wales. Uh, loved the hood video, especially the detonation. Thank you. Really nice animation. Hooray. So I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That was a lot of work. Like I'd never animated a big explosion like that. So that was a, a lot of... Uh, a lot of effort went into it, but the funny thing about using Unreal Engine is even after days and days and days of work, you render out the final shot, and it just looks like a video game. And um, I was showing it to my friends and they're like, oh cool, is this War Thunder or World of Warships? <laughs> like, no, I, I, I did this myself. But I used World of Warships models for that. They were kind enough to give me models of all the major players. King, it wasn't Prince of Wales, it was King George V, uh, their Bismarck model and Hood and um, Prince Eugen. And uh, I was, you know, because I've actually played World of Warships a long time. I did a little ad sponsorship for them in that video, and I'm not joking. I've played it since like release beta. And uh, anyway, I'm I'm rambling, but my animation work is fun to do. It is very time consuming, but I'm glad you enjoy it. By the way, you might uh, want to take a look at a uh, game called Stormworks: Build and Rescue. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I've been meaning to play Stormworks. So you guys know I stream on my other channel. I play some video games, so I might uh, might give that a crack. Thanks so much. Uh, Drelloft says, uh, with six euros, thank you, my friend, could you create a what-if video about um, if the Costa Concordia sank in the middle of the ocean? Yeah, I mean, even... Uh, the funny thing is, she didn't need to sink in the ocean. She just needed to have um, been dislodged from the shelf that she was sitting on, and the sinking would have been total. I mean, she would have... I think it was a couple hundred feet deep. Um, so the ship would have sunk as if it were in the middle of the ocean. I think, um, because of course, if it sank in the middle of the ocean, there would have been nothing for it to hit in theory, but assuming maybe it hit an iceberg or something instead of a rock, uh, that kind of damage, you know, I mean, it wasn't just like in Titanic's case, you know, where the plates had been separated at the seams by three inches or four inches. This was like a, an unbelievable gouge torn out of the bottom of this ship and, you know, I mean, as soon as you lose buoyancy like that, like no ship can survive that kind of damage because the inrush of water is so great uh, that it's, you know, the, the systems, the survival systems are just immediately overwhelmed. Um, there was a fascinating story about a uh, Spanish steamer uh, called the Principe de Asturias, who um, the crew, I mean, it was in the middle of a storm and they were battling their way out of, I think out of Brazil, potentially. Um, and, uh, yeah, she, she was dragged over a rock and essentially like the bottom of the ship was ripped out. Like there was, you know, the, the keel or whatever. So it was just torn open like a sardine can and, uh, 
ship sank with a huge loss of life. It's been referred to as uh, the, the Spanish-speaking world's Titanic because apparently any time a ship sinks, it is the such and such Titanic. Not like I can talk. I, I put out a video about the Empress of Ireland and referred to it as Canada's Titanic. So a little, a little editorialism never, never hurt. Anyway, yeah, go and read about the Principe de Astorius. It's a fascinating story. And I'm sorry about my terrible Spanish accent, which is non-existent, in fact. Thank you very much. Uh, but yes, I would be interested in doing some kind of uh, what would happen if a modern ship suffered that kind of damage in the middle of the ocean. I'd be very curious. More interested in the way people would behave and act. You know, in Titanic's day, it was, you know, people aspired to um, maintain dignity and composure as best they could at all times. And even then, towards the end of the sinking, it was absolute chaos and pandemonium. Whereas now, I think uh, we're such an individualist society not to get too philosophical that people would you know be clamoring to get off immediately usually um by the look of it the captain and crew were the ones who were running to get off first nowadays anyway um atlantic ocean liners uh says a a very touching um message which is not a super chat it says hello i just wanted to say that your videos have made me smile and get through uh hard times on february 14th 2023 my sister passed away from erwin's sarcoma um and yeah I'm, I'm sorry to hear that that's that's terrible uh but i'm glad that you found any solace in any distraction that my my videos can give you it's it never gets easier and um yeah that's uh that's that's a tough break my friend i'm really sorry to hear that they also asked what is your favorite ocean liner and uh i used to say that my favorite ocean liner was the johan van alden barnevelt which was a bit of a joke answer, but having made the Laconia video and seeing how horrific the end of that story was, I'm not going to say that the Johan van Alden Barnevelt is my favourite ocean liner anymore. I will say the Strathnaver. The Strathnaver was the ship that carried my family to Australia in 1959, and uh, just a beautiful ship, a beautiful looking ship. Three funnels and very like shore looking. It looks very solid, very square, and just looks like it's designed to batter its way through the ocean. So hell of a liner and beautiful, beautiful ship. So any of those Straths would uh would qualify but yeah Strathnaver for me because we got the family connection and i've got little bits of it around my house as well from uh, from different different areas airwicker with ten dollars hello my friend will you uh go back to more technical videos like the reasoning for offset screws on early twin liners or perhaps a video uh how the evolution of hms hoods design yeah so you guys will be pleased to hear um that i am currently working on a video that is like I don't even know how to describe this. Going back to my roots, it's a no nonsense, no frills, honest to God, here's how the Titanic worked. And the video is called, uh, how did they heat and cool the Titanic? Yes, it's about the Titanic, but of course the methodologies apply to any other ocean liner of the era. And uh, the video is about, um, yeah, exactly that, how they heated and cooled the Titanic. I talk about all the, the vents and the fans and stuff. It's going to be one of those videos that I would have done two years ago, uh, for, that just goes for 10 or 15 minutes where it's just me talking at the camera like here's how ventilation fans work and here's a centrifugal fan and so um yeah i will be doing more like you know kind of what the channel was originally started for which was like that technical sort of esoteric technology video but also sprinkling in my favorite kinds of uh cinematic uh <laughs> like the laconia cruise ship fire video i love doing that um, and then a few of those like little top five videos, which are great for stories that I want to tell that can't like fit into the full, full length video, you know? So yeah, I'll, 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 um, I will be doing more technical videos because I know you guys enjoy them and I enjoy making them. I just kind of, um, didn't want to, you know, I wanted to experiment with a few different things, but I also don't want to get away from what the channel was made from, you know, it's, it's roots, useless information about how Titanic worked. <laughs> How thick was the plating on Titanic's funnels? You know, that, that kind of thing. That is crucial for everyday, uh, everyday knowledge. Um, Mordecalis has donated $20. Thank you. Thank you so much. And says, this is for a good drink on board the Queen Mary 2. Beautiful. Thank you, my friend. I will be uh, sipping on an old-fashioned thinking of you. Really appreciate it. I'm, uh, I think I already told you, I'm taking my mum on the cruise. It's not really a cruise. She's an ocean liner, so it's a voyage to Western Australia. And uh, I think I'll buy her a champagne with that one. Thank you. 
Uh, Celeste McAllister says, hi, Michael. Um, you've got to give us a history of the SS President Coolidge and the SS President Wilson. These are um, very interesting ships. So the, the, the American liners I'm fascinated by. First of all, I, I've always laughed at the, um, the, the fact that, you know, like the British and French and everyone else names their liners maybe not so much the Germans who did name them after statesmen, um, but the British and the French, very like romantic names, you know, like the Lusitania and the, you know, the, the Ile de France and so on. But the, the Americans are like, freedom, you know, President Coolidge. And then the United States lines straight up with just America. <laughs> um, but yes, the, uh, the President Coolidge story is fascinating. Of course, the sinking again, like, so many beautiful liners were lost during World War II under often very, very tragic circumstances. And uh, the Coolidge and the Hoover uh, and the, the Wilson, like I'd love to love to cover those. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not au fait enough now to kind of run through. I've, I've just got a little article up on them here on the, my other screen, but the photographs of um, the President Coolidge being abandoned, um, you know, they beached her after she started taking water from a mine and she was lost. But the photographs of them kind of like, if you look up President Coolidge, the photographs are hilarious. There's like a thousand guys, like ants running down lines on the side of the ship. It's pretty, pretty dramatic stuff, but yeah, very, very interesting. And I would love to, love to do a video on them. So great suggestion. Thanks for that. I will take a mental note of that. I'll keep the article up and uh, thanks so much for your, your $10. Uh, Yugi Parade says, uh, with a $5 donation. Thank you, my friend. That's a, that's another coffee. You know, the channel is powered by coffee. Hey, I uh, will only be, I won't be able to watch, watch for much longer, but thanks for getting me into ocean liners. Uh, my art is eternally grateful. Hey, listen, um, I, I stand on the backs of giants, you know, like when I was a kid, like I was five years old and I was obsessively poring over Ken Marshall's paintings of the Titanic, you know, and, and he, his, his eye for detail was such that I was fascinated by what I was looking at, you know, like what are the, what are those big weird fan looking things, you know, that kind of like stuck with me and all these years later, now I, you know, here I am of 27, 28 next week, actually it's my birthday next week. In three days, my birthday in three days, guys, nobody panic. Um, 28 in three days. Yeah. I, uh, now, now here I am a, a grown man, uh, looking at this stuff and getting to tell other people about how these things work. Um, but I was inspired by, you know, titanic nerds of old to get into the hobby and here i am and it's it's really like touching to see that other people are getting into ocean liners because of what i'm doing i just can't believe it honestly so thank you so much and um best of luck with your art you know i mean i was an illustrator to begin with so i'm with you on the on the art front mr excalibur 43 with five dollars thank you my friend very much appreciate it this is a lot of coffee guys it's good to see you mike your work is amazing will you ever do a what if video on lusitania or olympic um so with my what if videos, I always try and get like a little, um, unique angle. So my unique angle with Titanic was to make the ship not do anything unique <laughs> and, and die of mediocrity. The Britannic, I wanted to, uh, make the most horrendous disaster I could think of in wartime. The Olympic, my plan, I've talked about it in the past, but I'm going to do a video where, um, and subvert expectations where somehow that the, the Nazi party acquires the Olympic when it's saved from scrapping somehow and uses it as a uh, propaganda tool because the, the Nazis, especially Josef Goebbels um, in particular, were fascinated by the Titanic story. And they, the 1942 film about the Titanic that they made was a propaganda piece um, blaming the, the British and, and certain enemies of the Third Reich for the, the sinking of the Titanic. And um, yeah, I would love to, I love this idea that they would have bought the Olympic and converted it into a, a, a pleasure cruiser for the, um, the, the organization that, that built the Wilhelm Gustloff um, called, let me get this. My, my German is terrible. Um, yeah, the, uh, it was a cruise ship for the Strength Through Joy program or Kraft durch Freude, Kraft durch Freude program. And um you know, if you were a good, hardworking uh, Nazi family, they would, you could go on a cruise. You know, I don't exactly know how it worked. If you like accrued like frequent flyer points or something, but anyway, um, 
my plan is they do that with Olympic. Olympic's renamed to something like Horst Vessel or some you know appropriate Nazi propagandaish name, and then uh, turned into a floating flak platform and sunk by Avro Lancasters during World War II. That is my plan for the Olympic. I'm going to cut all the funnels off. She's going to be a stationary barge loaded with 88 millimeter anti-aircraft guns and 20 millimeter flak you know, quadruple flat guns and things like that. And uh, I'm going to put a tall boy bomb right through the middle of it. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. <laughs> there was somebody, there was somebody on my discord server who was like, you can't, don't, you can't do that. Don't sink the Olympic. And I'm like, I'm going to sink the Olympic. And he's like, no, don't um, have it preserved as a museum ship. And I'm like, I'm putting a, you know, 10,000 pound bomb right through the middle of the ship and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. Um, Andrew Mason with $5. Uh, since we're expanding a channel from liners, shouldn't you rename it? Uh, and consider doing trains, steamliners, and airliners. Yeah. Listen, I'm a huge aviation nerd. In fact, let me get something for you guys. Hold that thought, all right? <laughs> I'm such an aviation nerd, right? Um, in the middle of my kitchen table where anybody else would have placemats and maybe plates where you can eat. I've got a model of a Lockheed Super Constellation that's like the size of my, of my torso. Um, love aeroplanes. And one of these is, uh, is based in Australia. There was a restored um, US, I think it was National Guard uh, Constellation and they've restored it to like, as it would have looked as an Australian airliner. And I'm going to see it in two weekends at the Avalon Air Show. And I think you can fly in it. Really excited. So I'd love to do a video on uh, on these. Um, whether or not the airplane stuff will go on this channel or a new channel is kind of anybody's guess. But I've already got now a second channel, um, Time Travels, which is just doing general history. We just did a video on the, the um, Chernobyl disaster. We've got another one coming out um, in a week or two about Pompeii. So if you're interested in general history, I'd go and check out Time Travels, hosted by yours truly. But... Um, yeah, I want to do some aeroplane stuff. So, no, I won't rename Ocean Liner Designs. I will... Uh, God, it's a beautiful looking aeroplane. Um, I won't rename... <laughs> sorry, I just got distracted. Uh, I won't rename Ocean Liner Designs, but uh, it's a good name and people kind of know me, you know. But um, I will I will maybe make a new channel for, for aeroplane stuff. Anyway, pop this down. Isn't it... Is that not the most beautiful aeroplane? Look at the, the triple tails. Sorry, I know, I know you guys are probably more ship people and not at all interested in aircraft, so I'm not going to labor the point. Just saying, Super Constellation, best airliner. Um, good question, Andrew. But yeah, I, I, I'm not going to change my name, you know, even, even though... Although I, on the Hood video, I did get a lot of funny comments being like, wow, HMS Hood is an interesting ocean liner. <laughs> uh, um, ex, uh, Excellente Music says, uh, Titanic movie turns 25. I feel old and I'm only 22. Yeah, well, I remember uh, when that movie was still doing the rounds. I was really young, but um, it was a... I mean, that's really what dragged me um, kicking and screaming into the Titanic the Titanic field, that movie. I have a lot, a lot, a lot to owe to that movie. Like, um, that's why James Cameron is one of my favorite directors. He gets a lot of flack for things and that I don't think it totally deserved. People said that the... The script, for example, for Titanic was simple and that's the beauty of it. That was the whole point. This is a mass marketable piece of media and that could anybody in any culture could watch and immediately understand. And then under that is a layer of, of historical authenticity that Cameron was just pushing to the next level, you know. So um, big fan of the film, 25 years old, and it still holds up. You know, you, I'm seeing it tonight in IMAX, actually, because it's back in cinemas. So I couldn't, you know, couldn't not go. And they're, uh, they're going to, they're going to put it on IMAX, huge screen. Those ship models, you know, I've done a video on the models that they use for the film, one eighth scale models. You, all you're seeing is models breaking up, but they look like the real thing. It's so, so cool. So yeah, great, great movie making. And they don't make movies like that anymore. Corbin Sanders uh, says, I just got a notification you're streaming. and wanted to come in and say hi. Um, Oh, and say how top tier your videos are. Didn't say hi, but said how top tier your videos are. Thank you, my friend. Absolutely fascinating and well done. Keep it up. Thank you. Keep watching. Love your work. Good to have you here. Um, I hope I haven't missed any of uh, any of these super chats. I think I've I think I've almost caught up. I think I've almost caught up. Where are we at? Nope. 
nowhere near catching up. All right. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I talk so much. Um, here we go. Catherine Ryan says, when a, when a nice Aussie man says he will show you books and then doesn't show you books. Let me, um, see, you've caught me out. Cause I, I just don't know what, which one, uh, what do you guys think? Something, let's go something not Titanic. Cause I feel like that's, that's all I talk about. Mm. This is actually, there's one really cool one here. It's from the sixties. Uh, it's called the law of ships and, um, it's just beautiful. Uh, do recommend if you can ever find a, uh, a copy of this book. I mean, the, the paper is stunning, but it's just full of diagrams and schematics of how they, how they built and operate ships. I'll just try and find, um, and they're like explanations of all the different, you know, like classes of ship, how they all operate, what they're used for, so on and so forth. But great, great, um, technological drawings of, um, the engines and let me, I'll just try and find, uh, like the framing, you know, how, how steamships are put together. Uh, I've always said that the reason I make videos so much about Titanic is because if you can understand how the Titanic was built, then you can understand how the Queen Mary was built and you can understand how, you know, virtually any ship was put together. And I think this book, I'm just trying to find a, a good picture for you guys. Yeah, here we go. I think just like a, a really nice diagram of, um, you know, a paddle steam engine and just, just kind of like a, guide to how it works and then pictures of sailing ships with all the sails listed and like the different types of anchor and so on. So I think, um, if you can get a copy of, uh, I think this was like 1963. Let's have a look here. Uh, 1964. Yeah. You're printed in Sweden, published in Australia. If you can get this Swedish Australian book from 1964 called the law of ships. There you go. Should be easy. Any any bookstore should have this. <laughs> Get it. It's it must have for any uh, any true ship nerd. There you go. There you go, Catherine. Sorry for for making you wait on that one. Tsunami. Listen, we are starting a handsome boat guy fan club. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys crack me up. Faith says, uh, me and my partner love your videos. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's lovely. We both have a shared interest in ocean liners and boats somehow. What a cool thing. It's nice that you guys can, can share that interest together. Um, I'm, I'm chuffed, uh, which is Australian for excited. I'm, I'm chuffed that you guys would, would spend your time watching my videos. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think I've ever dated anybody who had a similar interest to me in that regard. Um, but <laughs> maybe one day, I don't know. It just seems, I feel like uh, if you were both massive Titanic nerds, you would end up kind of getting sick of each other very quickly, you know, and arguing over what color Titanic's propeller notice signs were. <laughs> uh, um, Caleb Rimmer, Rimer? Caleb Rimer with uh, a dollar. Thank you very much, my friend. Very good. It's all going in the, the Ocean Liner Designs coffee fund. That's not true. It's, um, it's all going towards uh, script writing and, I bought a new computer. Uh, gee, that was a man, not cheap, but important because now I can animate a lot faster and, and it's, it's really working. Hey, you guys are uh, wishing me a happy birthday. Thanks. Thank you so much. I'm excited. I don't even know what I'm going to do for it, but, uh, I'm doing something. I think I might be doing a, a dinner. Aerial ballet with $5. We all know that if any of our dads were on the Titanic, uh, he would have been able to save it with duct tape. Little, little WD 40. And, uh, and duct tape should be fine. <laughs> Maybe not my dad. My dad is, uh, he's not, he's not a big handy kind of dad. He definitely does dad projects. You know what I mean? Like assembling a barbecue or like he does dad stuff, but I don't know that. What would he do to try and save the Titanic? What would my dad do? That's a good question. Me. Congratulations on asking myself a good question. Yeah. I don't know if he'd, if he'd, he'd go at it with the, the, the duct tape. I like the idea though. Logan Huffgarden with $2. Uh, will you also do a video on the SS Great Eastern? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, the, the Great Eastern's fascinating. So the, the ship um, was originally intended to come to Australia, which is why it was so big. The point being that you could load it with coal and it could survive the voyage out from Britain to Australia, which I think at the time was like a three month trip plus. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Uh, Great Eastern could have done it faster because she was a 
your steamer. But at the time, you know, sailing ships were taking months. In the end, Ocean Line has got it down to a three-week trip. So when Dad came out on the Strathnaver in 59, it was, uh, yeah, it was like three weeks, like clockwork. When you think about it, like, yeah, it's, it's a hell of a long way, but, uh, you know, three weeks of relaxing at sea, doing fun crossing the equator activities. I'd, I'd do it. But yeah, Great Eastern's definitely on the list. Finlay Lavery says with five, uh, five pounds. Thank you, my friend. Have you checked out the recently released 80 minutes footage of Titanic's discovery from the Woodsole Oceanographic Institute? Yes, I have. Um, fast, absolutely fascinated by it. I'm going to stream on my other channel, the Mike Brady channel, uh, and kind of like play it and maybe just commentate and talk with you guys about it. I might do that this week coming because the footage is, is spectacular. I mean, the thing to remember is that the Titanic doesn't look like that anymore. That's now f like 40 year old footage and the ship has, you know, deteriorated. Um, if you want to know what Titanic will look like in 20 years or 30 years, maybe, maybe more, look at the Mahino wreck. Um, that is kind of what Titanic will look like as the superstructure collapses because it's built very, very light steel. The, uh, all that will be left is the hull and the plates of the hull will disintegrate, leaving only the frames and some of the plating around the, the framing. So in the end, Titanic will really just be the, the frame structure just sitting on the sea floor in a similar way, I think, to how Mahino looks um, today. And then eventually she'll just be a little rusty colored patch at the bottom of the ocean. But, you know, 10,000 years into the future, the propellers will still be there. Anything that's manganese, bronze, they'll still be sitting there. So that, because, uh, you know, bronze is timeless. So the footage is spectacular, not only because it's beautiful, but also because ship does not look like that anymore. So it's like a little time capsule. It's very cool. In fact, you can still see some of the rigging draped over the forecastle, which I think is long gone. That's very cool. Judy Bassett with seven, uh, seven euros. Thank you very much for that. That's very nice. Could you do a video about Scotch marine boilers? Yeah, well, the Scots know how to make a good boiler. <laughs> this is not a funny joke. I don't know why I tried. Um, yeah, absolutely. The, the whole, the, the way those things work, the, that we could harness the power of steam and, and drive things that are like 50,000, 80,000 tons across the ocean, just from like basic thermody thermodynamic and engineering principles that are thousands of years old is so, so cool. Like, I love it. The Scotch boiler, I mean, like powered the Western world for so long. Um, yeah, love to do a video on it. Great idea. Going to write it down on my little idea spreadsheet. Scotch. Here's a little, um, little factoid for your for your troubles. Um, the Queen Mary was built with um, Yarrow Admiralty boilers, I believe. But if you look at photographs, you'll see that she's being loaded with um, with Scotch boilers as well, and um, she actually had a mix. So the the Scotch boilers, uh, I believe. Let me just get my facts right before I go spouting this, this fact off real quick. She did have Scotch boilers, um, even though she had the more modern um, staff, her, her main engines. Um, the, uh, and the, so here, here it is. The number one boiler room had three double-ended Scotch boilers. Um, they were oil-fired, so not coal. Um, they had 24 furnaces. The oil's pumped in as a fine jet, and so on and so forth. Um, the boilers are used for auxiliary purposes. So these included the electric turbo generators for the hotel services, the ship's heating systems, the laundry, uh, the swimming bath heaters, uh, the kitchen and galley auxiliaries and oil tank um, heaters. So Queen Mary is obviously trying to harness as much power as she can for her main engines. And so those, those Yarrow boilers cannot have steam diverted for things like heating the pool, right? So you put three um, double-ended Scotch boilers in purely to um, provide hot steam for all these other you know, features of the ship. Very interesting and clever. Um, so there you go. That's my little useless factoid for the day. Um, Southeast Rail uh, Productions with five pounds. Thank you very much, my friend says, Hi, Mike, would you do a video on the steamship Shield Hall? I would love to go and visit the Shield Hall and film on it. Um, beautiful engine room. If you guys, you can go on YouTube, look up the, the steamship Shield Hall. Um, it's very cool. There's something I wanted to talk to you about, um, and now might be the time to do it. Unfortunately, I got a message today that 
there is a um, a beautiful ship about to be uh, scrapped in in Australia, and I'm not happy about it. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about this. Oh, somebody just gifted a, a membership to some viewers. Well, I didn't even know that was possible. We'll get back to that in a sec. That's exciting. There was a 98-year-old tugboat. She was built, I believe, in Scotland, 1925, called the, 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 the Forceful, right? Um, go on Google and look up the, the Tug Forceful. Gorgeous, gorgeous boat. I mean, um, the, the one of the only, I believe, um, we've got the Steam Tug Wattle, which I think is still around in Australia. But the Forceful has been up in Brisbane, you know, functioning for, for like almost a century. And she was doing joy rides in the engine room. She's got a triple expansion steam engine, I believe. It looks very, very similar to the one that was used um, in, the, in the film Titanic. And um, they've just kind of run out of money and just announced that this 100-year-old, you know, beautiful relic of, of maritime history, they're just probably going to get it scrapped in April or May which is pathetic because state government will invest, you know, billions of dollars in, in projects. And it seems unbelievable that a ship that, granted, she needs some work, but she's in fine condition to be restored. And yeah, you know, what's a couple million here and there, right? But if you are in Australia or if you're at all interested in the, the forceful preservation, um, I would be writing to uh local brisbane council or the government about please do something about this because th they cannot possibly in good conscience take this tugboat and if you've got a photograph up of the forceful it will break your heart if you go on youtube and look at this ship working she was sailing you know 15 years ago um it will break your heart i know it's a lot of money to keep these things going but <clears throat> you know what do they say all the the, the greatest uh, roman ruins the best preserved Roman ruins, the way we got all this history about ancient Rome, are not in Italy or Rome. They are in the outposts of the Roman Empire because Rome and the Roman Empire centrally was demolishing and constantly developing and not preserving that kind of history. Are we going to be that kind of society now, right? 100-year-old steamship. And uh, yeah, what do they need? Maybe like a million bucks to, to dry dock it and fix her up. You tell me like, federal government or local government couldn't scrape together a million bucks. So yeah, heartbreaking. And if this thing gets scrapped, I'd be, I'd be devastated. Sorry. That's my rant for the day. Um, you reminded me with the shield hall, but yeah, look up the steam tug forceful. And if you, if you believe in the ship's preservation, um, write a, a strongly worded letter of complaint to uh, local Brisbane government. Oh, gets me fired up, man. Good question. Anyway, shield hall would love to go and visit. Uh, West Cork restorations with five euros. Thank you, my friend. Sorry for the rant, guys, but uh, it makes me really sad. Alejandro Flores Ibarra says, what are some uh, ship lines you wish still existed? Yeah, man, the, um, I wish, I, I kind of wish White Star had, had stuck around. You know, it'd be interesting seeing them as their own company. I'm sure they would have gone defunct uh, long ago, as they did. But um, it would be interesting seeing a modern iteration of White Star line, given their kind of checkered history you know, Cunard kind of didn't have the same checkered history. Cunard got away, I think, with it. So I'm straightening my tie in the wrong direction. Cunard had had a lot of the glamour and the glory and White Star, unfortunately, kept getting marred in, in disasters. And um, yeah, I'd be interested in seeing what a, a White Star Line uh, cruise ship would look like today. <laughs> but yeah, some of the others, of course, Union Castle Line, for example, like, uh, man, they were, they were great. Now, I, uh, I think I'm missing like a million, uh, a million super chats here. Let me, it's, it's really difficult to, uh, to catch up here. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything because I can see someone's donated a hundred bucks and I want to get to that. Um, I'm going to keep, keep going. Um, John Bigler with $4. Thank you, my friend. Really appreciate it, man. And it's a coffee. He's, he's got a, like a little animation of someone like giving someone a coffee. Yes. That's exactly what I need to function. Road Weary with $4.99, um, $5. I'm sounding like a salesman. Only $4.99. Good evening, Mike. Uh, the preserved wreck video was excellent. Thank you, my friend. Thanks. Um, I, I guess like, you know, I do try and make the thumbnails, not like clickbait, but because I, I would never put in a, a photograph and a thumbnail for a ship that isn't in the video. You know what I mean? But you want to try and capture people's attention. And 
Um, people clicked on it expecting like a top five preserved shipwrecks and just like just footage of the wreck, not a history lesson. So I think a few people were disappointed that I was just telling them ship history. So sorry, guys. You know, I try and I try and balance it. I try and get photographs and footage of the of the wrecks as well. But the thing that blew my mind, maybe not the best um, turn of phrase to use in the context, but was the the human brain that was preserved on the wreck of the Vasa is insane. Like four hundred year old human brain. Air Wicker, will you do mukbang videos? I'm I'm pretty sure nobody wants to sit there and watch me eat a hamburger, but uh, it's the internet in 2023, so who knows? <laughs> Thank you, Air Wicker, for the suggestion that's going in my uh, in my ideas box. <laughs> uh, Craig Peter with 10 euros. Hi, Mike. Uh, content has been phenomenal lately. Thank you, my friend. The Laconia was heartbreaking. Um, wondering, will you ever do a video on HMS Audacious? Yeah, that's a good idea. Let me write that one down as well. You know, you know what it's like. There are so many ships, so little time. The Audacious incident was really interesting because, of course, you know, Olympic doing her thing and um, helping out. Yeah, I'd love to do a video on that. In fact, I'd love to do like a whole naval blunders series. And it kind of annoys me sometimes. And I have this great idea for a video and then someone does it. So I, for the longest time, I wanted to do a video about the HMS Victoria collision with the Camperdown um, when the two ships collided and uh, Victoria sank. And then someone like put one out that was so good. I forget what channel. And I just was like, ah, you know, so I would have animated it, but maybe, maybe next time. Catherine Ryan with, uh, with the hundred dollar donation. My goodness. Wow. Thank you very much. That's, that's extremely generous. Thanks for showing me the book. Should definitely put it back though, because you don't want to mess. I will, uh, definitely check it out friend. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I know what you're up to. Um, the book's great. I mean, uh, listen, I'm, I'm super lucky. I got a bunch of great books and often from, from, you know, secondhand stores that, that, uh, that are getting rid of them for nothing. Um, they are a, a pain to move when you move house. I will tell you that. Again, with the lipstick comments, not wearing lipstick. This is just, uh, I'm just naturally blessed. Oh, is Historic Travels here? I think someone mentioned that he'd, he'd popped up. Hey, Sam. How are you, man? So I'm so far behind on chat. So everything that I'm seeing is probably from 10 minutes ago because I talk so much and I'm just going through all my super chats. But hey, listen, I, the worst fates to, to suffer. Don't worry. Charlton Hawkins with $5. Uh, thank you, mate. Saw you on the news yesterday at work. Didn't have sound, but it was cool to see you talking about your passion. Keep it up. Thank you, my friend. Yeah. Um, yes, I was on Australian news. I will... Um, maybe upload a version of that video somewhere. But uh, yeah, they, they, a reporter came around and interviewed me and it was cool. I mean, great little story. I think it was like four minutes long. So good, good amount of time. But um, yeah, they showed off my Titanic drawing and yeah, it was, it was touching. Uh, Tony Jones, the reporter, he uh, works for Channel 9 in Australia. Um, great guy, like really interested naturally in the Titanic. And while we were shooting the segment, it was just in my kitchen. Um, he was asking me all these questions about the Titanic because he's just naturally interested in it. And uh, the camera wasn't rolling. So I'm like giving him all these facts and things. And we had to redo it when the camera was rolling because he, he naturally was interested. Um, but yeah, he's a great journalist. And, and that was a really cool thing. So uh, glad, you, glad you enjoyed it. Um, Historic Travels, who uh, some of you may have heard of. He's a, he's a maritime researcher with a YouTube channel, which is very worth checking out. He's also a longtime friend of the channel. Hey, Sam. Um, with $5. Thank you, man. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the Great Eastern the only ship to have sailing masts, paddle wheels, and propellers? Um, yeah. Oh, let me think. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I think I can think of a contender. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. You might have got me on that. I reckon you could be right. Unfortunately, my... Uh, I can't, I can't think there was one that I was thinking of the great Western didn't have a, didn't have a central screw. She was just a paddle ship. It's funny, huh? Three propulsion methods. Um, you could be right. I'll get back to you on that. I'll think, um, I can't think of another one off the top of my head. Maybe you guys in the, in the chat will be able to come up with something, but I can't, I can't think of another, gee, propellers, paddle wheels and, and sails. It's a very specific period of time where that would have ever been a thing, right? So we're talking like 1840 or 18, 1835 maybe through to maybe 1880 
or slightly before 1870. So it's like only 30, 40 years or so where that would possibly be a thing. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, I think that may be the only one. Potentially. I'm going to say, yeah, sorry. That's, that wasn't very convincing, but <laughs> I'll just pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, Sam, you're right. It was the only one. I, I don't know for certain. Potentially. Um, I can't say this name because I think it is in Russian. So I, I'm terribly sorry. Russian or Ukrainian, I'm not sure. Uh, and I'm sorry if uh, I have butchered even the language that the name is in. So please forgive me. Uh, but with a donation of five, uh, BGN says, Do you think Titanic might have had a better chance of survival if her engines were running in reverse after she hit the iceberg during the flood? No, it, you know, the... Um, the you're dealing here with a, a displacement of buoyancy because early, I mean, the, one of the early warning signs and the signs of disaster was the uh, forward trim tank, the vent at the top hissing. And one of the uh, lamp trimmers who was immediately after the disaster, the ship seemed fine. Like there was nothing seemingly wrong with it, but he heard that hissing and it would only hiss if they were letting water in to um, balance the ship out. In this case, they weren't letting water in to balance the ship out. It had been opened up to the to the ocean. So he reports to the bridge and he says, hey, I think the trim tank forward is is letting water in. Uh, every bit of air that's coming out is buoyancy being lost. Now, if Titanic's engines are being run, run in reverse, you've got a little um, wash coming over the hull, but uh, as buoyancy is getting lost, the stern is... Um, raising a little higher but the bow's dropping really and uh no th th i don't think any there was anything could have been done in that regard someone was talking about crash mats or something but you know the damage was almost three stories or four stories below the, the the water level so no i don't think running in reverse would have done much and potentially could have forced more water in um maybe I don't, I'm not even convinced of that. I just think that it was kind of like, there was a there was a two hour clock that was started from the moment Titanic had those compartments open to the water. And if they were plowing ahead, I don't think it would have impacted the two hour timer. And if they were going in reverse, I don't think it would have impacted the two hour timer. I think they were just, you know, the clock was on. Uh, Tiger Essa says, waistcoat fit chat. Waist, sorry. <laughs> I haven't had my coffee. You've all been buying me coffees. So I have to go and get one. Uh, waistcoat fit check. The back looks neat. Thank you. Yeah, the back is, uh, is nice, um, uh, burgundy silk. I'm maybe going to, I don't know if you guys would be interested in this, but do a line of menswear. No, I want to, um, a friend of mine is a tailor and, uh, you know how much I like my waistcoats. I was thinking of doing, you know, like a little store online with, um, with ties that I would wear and waistcoats and maybe like an ocean liner designs tie would be cool. Um, that I can wear in my videos and um, put on put online. If you guys are interested in in uh, dressing like a radio operator on the Titanic, like I do, then. But I won't do a waistcoat fit check because unfortunately this waistcoat is a little older and uh, the the what goes inside the waistcoat has changed a little bit. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe added a, a little extra uh, <laughs> over COVID, especially a little extra couple kilogram. Um, Selena Lunaria gifted an Ocean Liner Designs membership, um, which is very cool, to Top Impressive Line. Welcome, and what a lovely gift. Well done, Selena. Um, now, I want to make sure that I have not missed any uh, Super Chats. There was one, two, no, there is a million of them. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm, oh, I'm so slow. I I'm cutting you off after this. No, I appreciate it. You guys have great questions. And again, I haven't done this for a long time. I haven't done this since last year, so... Eric D with $10. Thank you, my friend. He says, have you seen the docudrama Saving the Titanic? Yeah. Yep. Such a great movie depicting everything the engineers and laborers did below decks to keep the ship afloat as long as possible. Fascinating story. Those guys, um, they were so proud. They must have been so uh, proud of their machines. And Bell, the chief engineer, had been on Olympic and had been, been at sea for such a long time. Like they, um, they were masters of their craft and they knew in that moment that um, this was kind of like the culmination of their careers that, you know, aside from just running the ship day to day, like now they, they could have a direct impact in saving as many lives as possible. And to a man, they died. What's interesting though, is that they probably didn't die trapped down in the engine room, which is uh, commonly believed. There were many emergency staircases up out of the engine room. 
and the boiler rooms that would take you straight to the boat deck you wouldn't even have to go up through the passenger decks or anything and risk getting lost there were tons of escape ladders and things leading out ventilation hatches and trunking and um, a few of the engineers were spotted on deck uh, before the final plunge so they, they probably got out of the engine room but by that point the boats were gone um, but you you know I think they cover that in the in the in the docudrama but yeah save, saving the Titanic great and a beautiful production as well like they recreated it really well and um, yeah love it great suggestion road weary with five us dollars says the tug forceful is certainly beautiful definitely would be sad to see her go coffee mug first of all thank you for the coffee second of all absolutely how uh, criminal criminal um decision can't get mad i'm gonna get mad i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dwell on it i'm just saying if anybody from queensland government is watching this please don't scrap the tug forceful it's like one of a kind come on do better jared f with 10 bucks thanks for the super chat by the way road Rory. good to see you i know you're always around so good to see you on the uh on the video Jared F with 10 US dollars says, hey, make, uh, make, make, can't even get my own name right. This is going to go into highlights real, I can tell. Uh, hi, Mike. Uh, great work you're doing. Thank you. Would you consider doing a video about the Yarmouth Castle? Keep up the great work. Yeah, um, immediately after my Laconia video, people were, were talking about the, the Yarmouth Castle and saying that that was a more important disaster. It's interesting that um, the Yarmouth, I think, killed fewer passengers. It was a smaller ship, but... Um, it was, it's weird that the Yarmouth Castle is the wreck that drove a lot of change around fire safety at sea and things, and not the Laconia. Like, the Laconia was was on a much bigger scale. I mean, the ship was, like, double or triple the size of the Yarmouth Castle and killed more people. And I couldn't even find, when I was researching, I couldn't even find the outcome of, of you know, it says, okay, yeah, the, the captain and some of his crew were, were sentenced for negligence. What about the... the, the um, the inspectors who went across the ship um, made them launch two lifeboats and then gave the ship a seaworthy, a seaworthy certificate. Half the lifeboats couldn't launch. Um, multiple levels of failure had to have happened. And to a lot of people's point, um, the captain on Laconia stayed behind and oversaw the evacuation, but he was charged with negligence. Yeah, a captain has to be across, okay, can my davits launch the lifeboats? You know, that's probably a good thing for a captain to know, but... It's just really weird that that didn't drive change, but the Yarmouth Castle disaster did. So yeah, I'd be really interested in covering Yarmouth Castle, probably purely for my own curiosity, so I can research it more and figure out what was it about that disaster that drove more change than Laconia. And part of it, I think, may be the fact that um, Laconia was um, was not a a um, British or American steamship, but Greek operated, and then maybe therefore kind of it was you know swept under the rug or they didn't care so much whereas yarmouth castle was an american steamship um being run by i'm pretty sure even though she was panamanian registered um the caribbean cruise lines i don't know if that's an american line or not i just get the feeling if it was like american operated or british operated then it, you know maybe it'll drive more change anyway more research to be done but it's gone on the ideas list thank you for that good idea Daniel Berman with $5 says, is there any world in which the Queen Mary could go to sea again? Yeah, I can imagine the answer, but perhaps even for repairs or occasional service. Well, um, listen, if we can put a man on the moon, um, we can get, you know, as a society, we could come together and put Queen Mary to the sea. But she, uh, you know, she was gutted. The plan when she got to Long Beach was to turn her into a uh, floating museum. Uh, and I think it was going to be called like the Jacques Cousteau Underwater Museum or something. And they gutted all the machinery spaces on the Queen Mary and installed a museum. Oh, well, sorry, never installed it. Uh, they gutted the spaces to make room for the museum and it never went in. Without realizing they, the Queen Mary was by itself a museum. So all those boiler rooms, you know, were, were in perfectly preserved, gutted. Um, now I think, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, you could, but the the hull is is you know badly corroded and and she she's built pretty tough. I think yeah you could you could probably restore if you, if unlimited budget right you could. But I don't like feasibly. I don't think there's a world in which there there are the amount of repairs. Very very different set of um, rules for a ship that is a static display piece versus one that is ocean going. 
um, in terms of like the the standard of um, of repair and, and quality of machinery and parts. You'd have to retool and manufacture all the boilers um, as new. You would have to gut the bilge and, and reinstall all the plating basically because that's all rotten. The pool is collapsing because somebody knocked out a column um, by accident and one in structural column now means the pool deck's going. I don't know if they fixed that yet. So just stuff like that. Um, yeah, hell of a lot of work. Love to see it happen though. Can you imagine? Anyway, maybe one day. Um, good question. Southeast Rail Production with five pounds says, I'm going on Shield Hall in July. If you want some footage, let me know. That'd be cool. Yeah. Hey, jump on the Ocean Liner Designs Discord. Let us all see it. Um, very cool. Let us know how you go with that. That sounds fun. Uh, Selena Lunaria, Lunaria, I think I'm saying that right, says, um, I think you missed my comment. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm a little behind on the super chats. I'm doing my best to keep up. Um, I think you missed my comment about what if Olympics sank. Imagine Titanic ramming um, and sinking U boat 108. Yeah, so you think, like, what if Olympics sank in World War One? Would be very interesting. Uh, yeah, I think Olympics' best years were in the 20s and 30s. Well, more so the 20s. So it would have been sad to not see her be like the, the movie star liner that she was. Oh, totally on top of the world. 1921 and 1922, the Olympic was like living it up and making a fortune. And then uh, the Majestic was introduced and the Olympic was kind of like the the little sister, if you will. But um, yeah, it, it would have been sad to not get to see Olympic become the legendary ship. And in fact, when Olympic was scrapped in... in um, you know, from when was that? Like 34, 35 and 36 onwards. There were, there were a crew who'd been on Olympic their entire careers. So people who'd had 30 years plus at sea, um, you know, 20, 20 something. How many, how many years is it? 1911 to 1935. Yeah. That many years at sea, 20 or 25, maybe years at sea on the, on the Olympic and never another ship. Fascinating. Dale Hampton, $5. Have a coffee in honor of the beautiful Tug Forceful. Thank you. I will. The Forceful just makes my eye twitch. makes me so mad, but the coffee will... I was about to say the coffee will calm me down, but that's not typically what coffee does. Ariel Ballet with $5. Are you happy to finally see the USS Texas finally getting restored? Yeah. Uh, go on the Texas YouTube channel and watch. It's fascinating. They've got the ship up, up on the stocks, and they're just giving you a tour under the hull. And... Um, the original 1912 hull is there under the torpedo blister, which was a later addition, I think in the 20s. And um, all the riveting and stuff, it's its just riveting. Uh, great to see. Very, very exciting. So, yeah, I'm, I'm following that closely. And uh, I'll leave a little comment on their video every now and then because I'm so chuffed. Like, I'm so excited to see them restoring the ship. I thought she was going to sink. I mean, at one point she was. She was listing over like 10 degrees. Disaster. Um... I think I'm catching up. Landy Vlad gave a dollar. Good to see you, man. Thanks for joining Olympic WS uh, with a donation of CZK49. I, You know, it's funny. Like, I've... <laughs> Some of these currencies I'm not familiar with. Um, that is a uh, Czech Corona. Thank you very much. That is a uh, 49 Czech Corona. Very cool, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh... Historic Travel says, SS Great Eastern, the only ship equipped with a first funnel rocket ejection system. <laughs> for those... <laughs> oh, it's so wrong. Uh, for those of you um, wondering what that is about, uh, yeah. The Great Eastern was a ship with a troubled past and at one point suffered a... Um, just a little explosion. Nothing to worry about, just a little one. Um, yeah. Good one, Sam. <laughs> Did anyone die in that? I feel like someone did. Uh, grim. I think I'm catching up on my super chats. All right, let's see. I think I might have one or two more and then uh, it's already 10.39 here. So I'm gonna have to head off and finish my video about Titanic's heating and cooling, which I'm sure you guys are really gonna enjoy. Tiger Shark 44 with a Euro. Thank you very much. Good to see you and welcome. Umbrella Lemming with $10 says, perhaps uh, we can hope Forceful can get something like the Polly Woodside treatment. Come on, Queensland government, right? Yeah, for those in the, not in the know, the Pollywood side is a very, very cute Belfast-built three-masted bark um, that at one point was facing destruction but was restored to a static condition. The ship has had its hull 
mostly replaced with concrete. I think she was iron hulled or steel. I, I, no, she was steel hulled, excuse me. But um, a lot of it's been replaced with concrete. And um, yeah, unfortunately, she's uh, forceful. Hopefully would get the same treat treatment. We'll see. Um, okay, Lenny Toshev. Thank you. He's Bulgarian, not Russian. I'm sorry for, uh, for, for misidentifying you there, my friend. Good to, good to see you. Hope you're doing well in Bulgaria. Greetings from Australia. But anyway, I think she still may have survived longer if she fought the waves, not just stood there. Yeah, I... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I wonder. Maybe. I mean, it's, it's you know, I, I, I don't like to get too hypothetical because it's kind of, it's interesting. Like with Britannic, for example, you know, they were trying to beach it. And um, in that case, I think, you know, it was forcing water up and into the portholes, uh, which were open against regulation to air out the, the, um, the wards because she was a hospital. So, uh, you know, it could have had the opposite effect. I wonder if, you know, sailing forward could have created a wash over the bow that submerges the forecastle. Water starts pouring into the first cargo hatch, the second and third cargo hatch earlier. Um, yeah, I wonder. The the hawse holes and, and ports for the, the lines are out there, so they could be flooding some of those, like, service machinery decks down on the forecastle. And, yeah, I wonder if um, if it could have had the opposite effect. Uh, it's It's a good hypothetical question. Um, something I would be interested to ask a naval architect. So Stephen Payne, for example, who designed Queen Mary 2, um, would be very interesting to get his, his opinion on it because the guy's a legend. I'm sure he could comment on something like that. Um, someone along those lines. Um, Wagminer with five US dollars says, I ordered HMS troop ship uh, Titanic print last November. Last November? Do you know when you'll fulfill or ship these? So those are limited edition prints that I sign and, and number individually, which means typically they take a little longer, but um, November's a bit extreme. I've had um, a number of issues with my uh, fulfillment with the prints. So I think a lot of people have been waiting a long time and, and uh, emailing me and um, I'm trying to work through these as best I can. So sorry you've waited so long. I'm going to take notice of that. And actually I'm just going to print screen that and chase it up afterwards because a lot of these got fulfilled in, in batches. Um, but I'm sorry, obviously the communication hasn't been good enough there. So I'm going to chase that up for you and, and see what I can do. Yeah. Again, like a few people have been waiting and, um, it kills me because, uh, I'm suffering a little bit from success in that, you know, this business started out when I was selling prints of ships, I was doing, you know, like a print a month. And ever since starting the YouTube channel, I think it's taken off and the, the infrastructure was just not there and the immediately got overwhelmed. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry you you have been waiting so long, my friend. I'll see what I can do and see if I can include something, um, a little a, a little something extra for uh, for your trouble. So I'll I'll chase that up for you. All right, but thanks thanks for letting me know and thanks for the five dollars as well. I appreciate the coffee, even though I probably don't deserve it. Um, Selena says, "Here's an idea. What if HMS Hood sank the Bismarck? That would." <laughs> What a plot twist. Can you imagine? Imagine a, a universe where the Bismarck is sailing out on its maiden, maiden operation, Rhein-Ubung, and gets a magazine detonation from the Hood. Hood would, ha would go down in history as like, that would go, you've broken my brain with that one. That's hilarious. Hood would have been celebrated. I mean, it was already a celebrity, but you know, the British still wouldn't have preserved it. They still would have scrapped it because they were so austere at the end of World War II. If they scrapped if they scrapped the um, the war spite, they, even, even, even if Hood just elevated itself, became sentient, and the Hood lifted itself out of the ocean and flew to the moon and returned with moon rocks and then landed, the British still would have scrapped it. <laughs> Weird example. But they, you know, like they just didn't care. They were just scrapping all their ships. So cool what if. I do, I do like that. Uh, Thomas Chavez with $2 says, would you consider an Edmund Fitzgerald video? Yeah, absolutely. Again, um, one of those really interesting, uh, interesting stories that is pretty well covered, but I would love to do my own take. You guys know when I do these disaster videos, I like to do them um, like kind of cinematically. I love doing the animations and putting music to it, sound effects and doing the whole thing. So um, absolutely. I would love to do that. I want to cover every ship in history, make a video on every ship. They estimate there are 6 million shipwrecks at the bottom of the 
bottom of the ocean. So I want to do a video on every single one. So that's 6 million videos, 15 minutes long each. So 15 minutes times 6 million. So that's uh, that many uh, minutes in hours. So that's um, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So it's 1,500,000 hours of content, um, which is uh, hours in days, uh, which is 62,500 days, uh, which is 171 years. If you started playing a video, a 15 minute long video on every shipwreck in history, you would have to be watching for 171 years. So that's my plan. <laughs> You know, in all fairness though, with AI, with ChatGPT, what it is, you could deep fake me, get ChatGPT to just auto generate ocean liner designs videos until the end of time. And you get 171 calendar years worth of content. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a bit silly now. Wagminder with $2 and $2 again, um, order number uh that and thank you and all good thank you thanks so much for chasing that up man i listen and if anyone if anyone else is watching this and and has been waiting a long time i'm sorry i'm i'm trying to work through them uh, it doesn't get more like mum and pop business than me in my living room like processing prints like every single one of these prints is handled by me and um yeah i, I never never expected uh, so much interest so i'm sorry you've been waiting so long i'm so far out of my depth and i'm doing my best so i'm sorry um, Epic Trains Canada with 10 Canadian dollars says, Hey, I noticed you were live and decided to check in. I had a Titanic phase when I was a kid. Yeah. And the last few years I've been rekindling the old interest. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I, I assume you're a train person from your, um, from your username and, and image, uh, from a ship person to a train person. We are, we are kindred spirits. We are brothers, um, brothers and sisters, uh, train people love them. I don't understand trains, but I'm willing to learn. My Titanic phase just never went away. It's still going. There's, there's a recording of when I was three years old, explaining, three years old, explaining to my mother how the Titanic sank. And uh, I will try and find that recording because I've been doing this since I was three, apparently, explaining to people how the Titanic sank. There you go. But thank you. Uh, 35C um, with 65 SEK says, uh, thank you for the amazing content. I hope you continue making videos. Thank you. I, I absolutely will. I mean, again, I never expected people to enjoy it this much. I did this for fun. So the fact that you guys are enjoying it means I will always, I will always uh, continue to, you know, improve the videos. I mean, you know, again, like these donations and the super chats, they all go towards um, basically improving the channel for those that don't know. And, and, um, I don't, I won't get too far into this, but people on YouTube complain about YouTube creator burnout. So typically if you're a YouTuber, um, which I've somehow become, you know, if you don't publish a video for like a week, the algorithm will punish you. People will stop watching as much. YouTube won't promote your content on the algorithm. So it means you're constantly like trying to get stuff out. And unfortunately in my case, the videos have gone from being like just 10, 15 minute long little you know, photo montages to having like animation and music and sound effects and stuff. And I, I just regularly work, you know, 16, 18 hour days and it's not been great. You know, like since last year, I've been working until a lot of nights, three, 4 AM, sometimes straight through to 8 AM, um, trying to get videos finished and published on time because otherwise, uh, you know, it really hurts the channel. So, you know, every bit, that you guys are helping out with, like even the super chats, um, you know, I can kind of outsource some of that work and I can get an editor to help me out or I can get a script writer to help me with some of the scripts. And it's tough. I, I find it very hard to relinquish control because um, my videos, like I'm so proud of them. I love the way they look and I want them to look and sound a very particular way. But uh, giving that away to an editor saying, hey, here's my brief, uh, you know, like it's not your, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's still my video, but it doesn't feel like it's mine. So something I have to learn to do because otherwise, you know, I, I can't continue the channel, right? I'll just get burnt out and crash. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting learning experience and, um, you know, I want to keep it up. Like I love doing this and I really love seeing you guys' comments. I mean, I enjoy live streams. I enjoy this, you know, kind of like riffing with you guys. Um, but yeah, thank you. I will continue to make videos. 
Well, we're getting towards the end of the stream, guys. Um, it's almost been an hour and a half and uh, it's flown by. Gee, it really has. Um, Dawson Hofbeck with uh, 10 Canadian dollars. Would you ever consider a video on the uh, nuclear ship Savannah or any other nuclear civilian ships? Greetings from British Columbia. Hello. Greetings back from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, yeah, I mean, the nuclear ship thing, I'm, I'm a huge proponent. I think it's a great idea. Uh, you know, the there was a really good video done by Mustard, a YouTube channel uh, on the on the Savannah with gorgeous animation, um, which, again, like, very envious. I can't help but have uh, professional jealousy because I would have loved to have got that video out first. But um, great video. Uh, Mustard is a very good YouTube channel if you guys aren't already au fait. Yeah, the Savannah, even the whole nuclear ship concept, I think a video on that, maybe why it hasn't taken off so much. It, it does seem funny that given you know, the state of the cruise ship industry and the volume of pollution that, that cruise ships spew into the environment. If we can have nuclear aircraft carriers and submarines, like surely a nuclear cruise ship, you know, um, I think the general public is scared of the idea of nuclear, you know, like even nuclear submarines, the concept of a nuclear submarine, I think the general public is under the mistaken uh identity that's, what's the, no that's not the right the mistaken like theory that the that it's armed with nuclear warheads which isn't necessarily the case it just means as an engine that's powered by nuclear fission doesn't therefore spew um you know like diesel fumes into the atmosphere anyway i'd love to do a video on it because it's kind of like the question there was a documentary years ago called who killed the electric car you know like the idea of an electric car was suppressed for so long by by big oil and oil companies who had a vested interest so I think it's a very similar situation with nuclear power. There's been a very successful um, disinformation campaign around the safety of nuclear power. Obviously, there have been meltdowns um, which have damaged the environment. But, you know, even with the worst meltdowns that we've had in recent history, uh, I would stack the harm of oil production against nuclear, you know, meltdowns any day of the week. Anyway, it's an interesting, interesting discussion. Um, Josh Menard with a dollar. Thank you very much, my friend. Straight to the coffee fun. And I might need a coffee after this. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little sleepy. Um, I think I've, I've, I've got uh, almost everybody's super chats. I think someone just asked uh, where I'm from. Elliot Ella with two dollars says, "Which city are you in in Australia, and what time is it there?" It is uh, Melbourne, Australia, is where I'm from, uh, right down the bottom of uh, Australia and Victoria. Uh, it is currently 10.53 a.m. And I'm going to uh, head off in seven minutes at 11 a.m. I wanted to do a ship improvement thing, but we, like, just ran out of time. We'll do it again next time. Last super chat from Selena uh, Lunaria, a good friend with 10 pounds. There's last super chat, I promise. <laughs> I've been writing a uh, screen about the Carpathia and if you decide to do what if Hood sank the Bismarck video then I'd be willing to write some of that for you. Cool, yeah, I mean, you know, the the writing does take a long time. Um, a screenplay, yeah. No, oh, I figured you meant screenplay, that's all right. Yeah, the 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 writing does take for, for ages, you know. I mean, it's the writing can be can be tough, so. But at the same time, like, I love telling the stories in my own way. So it's, again, like one of those things I find it hard to, hard to let go. <laughs> 35C with uh, 65 SEK says, you ever heard of uh, this? Yeah, the Swedish American line. I would very much like to see a video about SAL. Yeah, Swedish America. Um, that, they, Swedish America were the owners of Kungsholm, right? Let's have a look. Um, I believe the, yeah, beautiful ship, the Kungsholm. Um, Sweden has a spectacular uh, maritime history that again is, is a lot of these european nations their maritime history is overshadowed by britain and america and germany and italy and what have you but, um swedish america were dominating uh, a lot of the european migrant trade from the 20s and 30s and on and um i think how many kung's homes did they have was it like four four or five kung's homes they use the name a lot but um my favorite is the ship from 1952 my favorite swedish america ship 1952's kung's home is a gorgeous gorgeous ship if you guys look it up um, beautiful looking thing eventually became the the Europa um, with North German Lloyd but uh, yeah beautiful ship so yeah I would love to do a little video on the history of SAL because again totally buried by by time Josh Menard with five dollars even if Titanic had enough lifeboats do you think they would have 
had enough time to get them all launched. No, yeah. They they ran out of time, man. They they had... Uh, I, I, I did a video on this and someone disagreed with me and said, no, if they had more lifeboats, the crew would have been inspired to work faster or something like that. But um, they, they simply straight up ran out of time. Murdoch was trying to lower the last boat on his side when the water like was coming up around his knees and swept him away. So... No, I think you would have had those boats attached to their falls. Um, with, now, they had buoyancy tanks. So the lifeboats weren't just wooden boats. They had little steel buoyancy tanks in them. And I'm interested in the idea that if Titanic was pulled under, the boats may have broken free from their falls and rocketed to the surface. And I think there were examples of people in the water and in other disasters being killed by debris as it broke free from the sinking ship beneath them, rocketing up to the surface. And I'm sure some of the boats may have done that. Um, either be dragged down to the bottom with the Titanic, rocket up to the surface and hit people in the water. Um, the, the big issue being the cold. So even if some of those boats in their half submerged state rocketed up to the surface, um, people would have been in the water clinging to these things and and uh, suffered through the night. I think, you know what, maybe a couple, maybe a dozen, maybe a couple dozen people may have survived clinging to the side of one of these things but very negligible impact on the disaster, I think. it would have. I mean, James Cameron always said he thought they would have gotten in the way. I'm not entirely sure they would have necessarily got in the way if they were, depending on the, the arrangement, Wellen's plan was to have two rows of lifeboat. That would have been a problem because that would not have worked forward because, of course, Titanic's A-deck promenade was enclosed with screens. And they had a hard time getting those windows down and getting people through the windows. So it means, okay, if you've got two rows of lifeboat, now you can't load the boats from the boat deck either forward. So really, now you only have the two low, two layers of boats aft at the other end of the ship, which means the number of effective lifeboats that you're going to be filling and lowering is 24 or 20, like still the same amount as the ship had um, in, in reality. That's my theory. Um, I don't think they would have necessarily got in the way. I just think it would have been impossible to fill and lower the forward boats. If you have two layers of boat and an enclosed promenade, you can't load the forward boats. So they're all useless, essentially, leaving just the aft boats. And then you've got the same number of boats as, as she carried anyway. So interesting uh, interesting thought. Someone may disagree with me. I'm I'm curious. Well, listen, guys, I'm really sorry we didn't get to do our uh, ship improvement. We can do a quick one. I mean, I've been here a little while. You guys not sick of me yet? We can do a really quick one, maybe. What ship shall we do? Give me, give me an idea. We can do a quick, just a little one. Just a... Just a quick ship makeover. Um, maybe the Queen Mary two. I mean, I'm going on the Queen Mary two, so maybe that that would be a that would be a good one. What do you guys think, Hellenic? Oh, the Hellenic Prince, <laughs> the floating kitchen knife. Oh, you're really gonna make me do the Hellenic Prince. All right. Um, okay. All right. Let's do it. Let's do the Hellenic Prince, guys. Uh, let's. <laughs> Let me just get a picture up real quick. Yep, there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of Hellenic Prince stuff going on. Yeah, Hellenic Prince. Okay, we're going. <laughs> How am I going to do this? This is this ship is unfixable. All right, let me let me just fire up Photoshop real quick. Uh, here we go. Hellenic Prince. Really, you guys, you like to see me suffer, don't you? All right, here we go. Um, okay, so Photoshop is loading up. I'm gonna copy this image over. Uh, we're going to. Start a new file. Oh man, this is gonna be so tough. I said a quick one. This this, this isn't quick. Uh, all right, let me just add a add my screen. Mm, screen capture. Okay, I'm gonna put that under me so you can see me. I drag myself down into the bottom of the screen. Uh, sorry guys, I wasn't set up for this. In case you couldn't tell. Ah. <sighs> Unfixable. Sounds like a true challenge. All right. Where do you even start with this? All right. Okay. Um, I've got some ideas. 
I've got some ideas. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is kind of like, obviously shift the kitchen knife situation. Um, so we're going to take the entire superstructure and we're gonna, like this whole chunk of superstructure here. Uh, we're going to copy that and paste it. We're gonna lift it up um, so it's about Maybe there-ish, kind of. This will make sense in a minute, trust me. I'm gonna put it about there. So already the ship looks a little bit more like a normal, a normal ship. <laughs> Cut and paste the JVO over the image. Oh no, I got an idea. I got an idea. I got an idea guys. This never gets old. How many of you know what I'm about to do? All right, here we go. There we go. Nope. I'm gonna put this. Yes. All righty. And I fixed it. <laughs> Uh, never gets old. You know, I will do joking aside. I will, um, I could use like a little bit of Titanic superstructure for this. No, it's, it's, it's too far gone. Never mind. I thought, yeah, <laughs> already knew it. You guys knew what I was going to do. All right, here we go. We're going to, um, we are going to keep this promenade here. We're going to get rid of this one though, because, um, she doesn't need it. And what I want to do is raise this part of the stern up. Uh, with that bit there to about there. So she's still got her cruiser stern because I think the cruiser stern is very, very uh, handsome. And then we're going to um, fix this bit now uh, by just kind of like coloring this in. Okay, so we're gonna add a new layer. I'm just gonna like, just fix this up so it doesn't look like I just chopped off. Whoop, that was that wasn't right. You know, it's, this is gonna be a little rough, but you get the idea. Uh, we're going to add some noise so it doesn't look too out of place. Excellent. Um, damn, now I have to fix this up as well. Put this in here. All right. That's, I mean, close enough. You guys, you know what I'm going for here. That's just like, that's the ship's cruiser stern. Okay, very good. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to just simply uh, get rid of that as well. Unfortunately, the rust I can't fix. Uh, we're just going to come in over the top. This is like Bob Ross, but for ships. And then look at the happy little portholes. Happy little portholes here, guys. And um, remember, there are no mistakes, only only happy little accidents. Except in the case of the Hellenic Prince, because the entire ship was a mistake. And then we're going to take these portholes and uh, copy and paste them on top. So I'm going to put those roughly there. I mean, again, very, very rough. Very, very rough. Uh, we're going to put those there and then another layer there. Okay. Now, the other issue with this ship is that the superstructure is a little too a little too far aft for my liking. So what I'm going to do is try. <laughs> this is going to be hard to Photoshop. I'm going to try and take uh, maybe this much of it. the The issue being that there's all this stuff in the background, so this may look a little a little rough. Uh, yes, it does. But anyway, I'm gonna. Oh goodness, really? All right, copy and paste this bit. I'm gonna put that there. We're gonna shrink it down a little bit because it's now further away from the camera. Uh, we'll put it about there and get rid of that much of it. And then this part, I'm just going to straight up delete this part of the superstructure, but try and keep those lifeboat davits intact. Sorry guys, very rough. This isn't gonna be pretty, but it wasn't pretty to begin with. So if this ends up looking like a dog's breakfast, it's not my fault. Okay. I, to be honest though, I really dig the funnel. I think the funnel looks cool. Um, this does look like a mess, but bear with me while I just fix this up real quick. Uh, that's the superstructure cool. So we're gonna come in under here. We're just gonna like fix the sky. So we'll just get rid of that because we don't need it anymore. I'm gonna fix this up. 
get rid of. Yeah, okay. Again, very rough. Please, please don't um, be insulted by how roughly I'm doing this. And we're gonna add some noise so it blends into the background there. Maybe like a little more, maybe five. That'll do. That'll do, Pig, that'll do. <laughs> Kim B says, what's a pillock? A pillock is um, a, a silly, silly person. Did I say pillock? Did I say pillock? I don't even remember saying that. That's funny. Um, this, <laughs> this ship may yet prove to be unfixable, but I am absolutely going to do my best. We're going to give her a second funnel here. Um, and you know what? Maybe like a tiny bit of tiny bit of superstructure. Just like a little island in the middle there. Get rid of that. So this is already... It's not great. It's not great. But it does look a little bit more like a like a, a liner, right? Like, come on. I mean, that was that was a pretty horrendous looking looking ship. It looks like Canton. Yeah, it looks like a, a P&O ship. Um, what we want to do, I guess, is maybe like a uh, uh, an aft mast, I think, would balance that out. So I'm not even going to like Photoshop that. I'm just going to come in very roughly and dump that in. Um, that's, I mean, that's not bad. I, I, it's still all hull. You know what I mean? Like, um, I'm not thrilled by the fact that it's all hull, but I can't. I can't add any superstructure because there's just nothing to get rid of those. The boats, like the, 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 the ship is a mess by its very nature. You know what I mean? I don't think there's anything else I can do to this. <laughs> I think this is honestly the best you're going to get out of the Hellenic Prince. We'll maybe add like a little smoke coming out of the funnels. I don't know if you guys have any more ideas. I, I truly think this is like the best we can get. Maybe what's bugging me is this, is this promenade, like not a fan. Uh, I wonder if you continued this forward, like, cause at the moment it's kind of like the promenade just begins out of nowhere. You know what I mean? So I'm wondering if we take the promenade deck, um, and copy and paste it and kind of like have it just like continue it along the side of the ship maybe nah that looks even more utilitarian jeez all right no get rid of that that was a bad idea <sighs> you know what i i think uh i think that's an improvement i don't think there's anything more i can do with that let's do a before and after and see just because again when you're doing these um it's easy to kind of like get lost in you know, trying to make it look really good, but you forget what it looked like before, uh, before you started. So here, here's the before. And there's the after. What do you guys think? <laughs> if you squint, it looks less like a kitchen knife. <laughs> make it... Make it less kitchen knife like. I did! I did make it less kitchen knife like. What are you talking about? Wait, okay, wait. Let me let me duplicate this. Where's my uh how can I duplicate this layer? Thank you. Before? Okay, there you go. Before, after. Again, it's not pretty. It's not pretty, but it does the job, and it looks a lot less like a knife. That's the, uh, honestly the best I can do. I don't know that... <laughs> what do you mean, make it less kitchen knife-like? How could I, how could I make, the, how could I possibly improve this? There's nothing else I can do. No, I'm, I'm calling it. This is done. Improved it. The, I know the promenade makes it look like a kitchen knife, but I, I don't think I can get rid of it. I mean, short of like... All right, let's plate over. What we're going to do, we're going to plate over the promenade just to see if it looks any better, all right? We'll get rid of this promenade.
I think it's going to look more boxy. I don't like it. I don't like it, guys. It's just boxy. Maybe, maybe if you had like a nice little, little elegant promenade, like one of these ones, you know. Oh, that's nicer. There you go. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll split the difference. We'll call, we'll say that's, that's a, a lot nicer, right? That's nice. That's okay. That, you know, honestly, this now just looks like one of those like, um, 50s budget cruise ships that they had operating. We'll give it like a little, a little, uh, and we'll, should we rename it as well as is tradition when we do these kinds of things? We'll give it a little, like some of that rigging, you know, the stuff that, whoa, didn't want to do that. Nope. There we go. This just straight up looks like a, like a, you know, 50s cruise ship. And uh, we're actually going to rename, rename it. Um, because this is no longer the Hellenic Prince. Give me a, give me a good name, guys. What should we call her? Our creation. <laughs> um, mad noise. All right. The hellish ship. There we go. And then... Center that, make that like a lot smaller. The SS knife, the Mike Eel Volt Van Alden. Oh my goodness. Do you, do you, do you two think God stays in heaven because he fears what he has created? I, listen guys, you know what? I'm going to say we did a good job with the kitchen knife. I think, um, I think that's an improvement. Uh, you know, um, part of why this looks so horrendous, I just realized is that we didn't touch the funnels. I forgot to improve the livery on the, uh, on the funnels. No wonder it looks terrible. Let's just get in here real quick and fix these up because uh, that just looks terrible. Sam, has anyone got champagne to break across the hole? Yeah. <laughs> um, and this one as well. We'll give it, you know what? We'll even give it nice little black tops and get rid of that awful um, smoke, uh, the soot residue on top of the funnels just to make a, there we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and give her a nice charming little black funnel top. Yeah, where are we? Here we go. Oh, that was too much. And then one for you as well, just to cover those awful soot marks. There you go, that's quite nice. And you know what? I wonder if, even if we gave her a black hull, I'm sure she'd look pretty. Let's try that out. This worked last time. Remember when we did um, the, uh, <laughs> the the Oriana and accidentally turned it into a German liner? Uh, we'll come in here, give it a little... Give the hull a little love. Look at that. Maybe... Nope, get the right. That'll do. That's better. Hey. Before. After. Before. After. We created our own little 1950s cruise ship today, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations. The kitchen knife was was born today. In fact, I'm just going to highlight the name. Pick it out in in gold. There we go. Maybe drop the opacity on that. There you go. What a beautiful little ship. Sorry, I don't know why my screen's wigging out. Anyway, there you go. 
Stephen Hemingway, make the funnel's lipstick colour. I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm not wearing lipstick. <laughs> I'm not wearing lipstick. I'm just blessed. Um, Chick Vicious with 20 US dollars. You you are too generous, my friend. Mike, sorry if you missed it earlier, but uh, did you get to the $100 super chat? I did. I did. It was about the book. Um, it was from Catherine Ryan. Uh, 100 bucks, which is a, an, a amazing, um, generous amount. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for reminding me, Chick. Stephen. Top impressive line says, now it kind of looks like the Multan. Yeah, I agree. Listen, I, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to call this improved. Are you not entertained? <laughs> now I'm going to go and have a coffee uh, because all of you bought me many coffees today and I really appreciate it. It looks a little bit like Homeric. The more I squint at it, it looks a little bit Homeric y. We, we accidentally made a white star liner. Damn it. In fact, you know what? We, you know, we did. You know, we did it. Knife ick. Live a pool. Kitchen knife ick. There you go. She's a white star liner. There you go. That's the running mate to Homeric. Um, I'm going to go and make a coffee. I'm going to finish my Titanic video. Keep an eye out tonight. That's going to be. How did they heat and cool the Titanic? I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Um, 35C with the last super chat of the evening. Um, with SEK65 again, have you ever heard of the HMS Blenheim? Um, if you have, uh, I'm so sorry for wasting your time. Listen, not any of, none of this is ever a waste of my time, except maybe the the SS Kitchen Knifeic over here. The Blenheim story is fascinating. I'm just going to get my um, my notes up. Um, the the I assume you're talking about um, the the 19th century um, protected cruiser, maybe. Um, there were a couple of Blenheims, uh, but that whole era of um, of protected cruiser is is fascinating, and they are bizarre. I'd love to do a little story on them. They're they're just fascinating. Again, like in this era where guns and armor were kind of like battling it out, and uh, armor was winning. Anyway, I'd love to do a video on it. So it's a cool idea. Um, if that's the Blenheim you're talking about, then 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 yes. In fact, any of the Blenheims. Darcy Stewart Russell uh, with 15 bucks says, Capitalism, go brr. Thank you for the 15 bucks, my friend. It all helps. Now, guys. Oh, 35C is talking about the one from 1807. My goodness. Well, I've got some reading to do then, hey? Yep. Oh, a ship of the line? Gee, no, I was thinking of the protected cruiser. Wow, we're going, we're going way back. Wrecked in 1807. Interesting. That's an interesting story. No, I, I, I don't think I'm familiar with this. She was uh, in a gale? Yeah, in a storm. So many of those ships got lost in storms. Unbelievable. She was, she disappeared. No further trace of the ship was ever found. Exp extensive search. Uh, the ship disappeared. Yeah, so many great ships disappeared like that. Um, interesting story. Thank you for that. I wasn't familiar with it. Commander Quillon, with what is the last super chat of the evening, says, last super chat of the evening. I take that as a challenge. Well, you can have it. Ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much for, for sticking with me. I think we had 300 viewers all night consistently. Have very much enjoyed your company. I hope this has been entertaining. Um, you guys, you guys are great. The only reason I do this is for you. Um, thank you for watching. Darcy Stewart Russell with what is the last super chat of the evening with 15 Australians saying, I accept your challenge. This is like a bidding war for who gets the last uh, super chat while I'm logging off. <laughs> oh my goodness. As always, have a wonderful day. Um, keep an eye out for the video tonight. Uh, Really appreciate your input. And thank you so much for the support, guys. It's it's really cool. And I'm going to go have a coffee. I'm going to go finish my video. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys soon. Ciao.